Thank you, Professor uh, Tim Powers, uh, Professor Paul Chasty, and all participants. Allow me to express my appreciation again. Uh, thank you for having me after my first visit last May. Man, it was a, indeed one of the most memorable visit to a university. This is one of the oldest, and it was a very brief visit. So we planned to do a second one, and we thought by the time I completed my term as governor, we will have more time. That's what we thought. <laughs> Apparently, that's not the case. And this is my uh, second, and I truly appreciate the invitations, not only to the university, but also the invitation to serve as one of the board members for the Institute for ASEAN uh, Studies here at Oxford University. So uh, it is indeed a privilege and honor to serve. I look forward uh, for that. And I'm very much uh, uh, hopeful that the Institute will provide more appetite to the world to pay more attention to Southeast Asia. And as we know, Southeast Asia is one of uh, the most peaceful uh, region in the past uh, 50 years. So now I've been also invited to share some of my thought about ASEAN and therefore allow me to uh, share some of my thinking about ASEAN and how ASEAN, Southeast Asia, will shape the global future and how we can engage uh, better. Uh, allow me to share some of the basics about uh, Southeast Asia. ASEAN is a region of different markets, very economic developments, and very diverse in terms of culture. And it has made this region one of the most competitive in today's world. And diversity have led investors from wide range of opportunity and seeing this region as a, a region that has tremendous uh, potentials. And the countries in ASEAN, we have 10 countries, and it varies significantly. The largest, Indonesia, we have around 270 million people. And uh, the smallest is Brunei, that has only around 400,000 people. And if I remember managing Jakarta, 400,000 is smaller than Kecamatan Cengkareng. Because <laughs> Cengkareng is 600,000 uh, people. And you have Indonesia that have 1.8 million square kilometer. It's around 2,600 times bigger than Singapore. So we're talking about a region with more than 650 million people and varied in terms of size of economy, in terms of size of, of populations. But on the other hand, this is also a region where we are seeing diversity and unity walk hand in hand. When it comes to diversity, I think it's hard to find other region as diverse as Southeast Asia. We have hundreds of languages, hundreds of ethnic groups, uh, and also 10 different countries. However, when it comes to common language, the people of Southeast Asia, uh, ASEAN has decided to use the official language of English. So the official language of ASEAN is, is English, even though uh, some of our language in the region is quite similar, sometimes with different uh, meaning. Selamat pagi in Indonesia and Malay means good morning. Uh, but selamat pagi in Tagalog means thank you. So uh, same pronunciation, same language with different meaning. It shows uh, diversity of us. But the, the question is also, why ASEAN matters today? I think I mentioned earlier about the economy. ASEAN as a member of regional bloc with a combined GDP of $3.2 trillion. 
and a population of 662 million uh, people. And if you're talking about the ASEAN economic community that was realized in 2015, the combined GDP is now the third fastest uh, growing region in terms of its economy. And as a critical uh, hub for global trade, we have over 2.8 trillion contributions of global trade uh, from Southeast Asia. So uh, economically, this is a region that is growing and a region that continue to show potentials to the world. Now, on the other aspect is about uh, new generations of ASEAN, which is young generations that have already uh, so connected to the digital world. And in fact, uh, in ASEAN, with 650 million people, we have 915 million mobile connections. So our mobile connection is 1.5 larger than the populations. I think some of you are carrying two cell phones anyway. And, and it shows that we are uh, so connected on that aspect. Now, the other aspect that is critical for, uh, for us here in ASEAN is ASEAN and the world. If I may say, we have three big region in Asia. You have East Asia, you have Southeast Asia, and then you have South Asia. Let's look at those regions in East Asia. We have nations, countries that is strong economically and important globally, such as, of course, number one, China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan. And then on top of that, we have North Korea. But imagining those countries forming a cooperation is something that is so difficult to imagine in that area. And then you're looking at South Asia. You have India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. Economically, India is growing and getting uh, importance to the world economy. However, when it comes to regions, it is also another region which is hard to imagine to work together. But and then you look at Southeast Asia, you have these 10 countries. Indonesia is part of G20, you have Singapore, you have Malaysia, the Philippines. This is a region where peace cooperations were actually taking place. So this is a unique region which not only able to facilitate cooperation within, uh, within the region, among countries within the region, but it has a potential that ASEAN could facilitate conversation among polarizing global powers. We have been seeing uh, the emergence of uh, polarizations in the past few years, and facilitating conversation among those powers has not been so easy. So ASEAN could perhaps play a crucial role on that aspect. And Indonesia, which happened to just receive presidency, chairmanship of ASEAN uh, two months ago. Now the chairman of ASEAN is Indonesia, and it is a country that can continue its successful role in facilitating G20 Leadership Summit. And we must uh, acknowledge that last November, uh, Indonesia was able to create an atmosphere of cooperation among G20 leadership. It was not easy at all. It was a, a lot of work, uh, year-long work, and Indonesia delivered. So we thought that having ASEAN as a region that can emerge at the global level, and on the other hand, we're seeing Indonesia is on the leadership. I'm hopeful that we will be uh, seeing uh, more roles of Indonesia and more roles of, of ASEAN uh, in the world arena. 
Now, if I may also uh, share some thought on this, is the fact that when it comes to uh, leadership, often it all starts at home. You can only play leadership role in the global arena if domestically you're also showing successes. There is no way you can play uh, an international role with credibility if at home you're not doing so. So I think this is one of the challenges in Indonesia is ensuring our democracy consolidate, our economic development is a quality with quality growth is happening, and with that we will be able uh, to play that role. So we do hope that with Indonesia's leadership, with ASEAN potentials to play a bigger role in, in the world, and us, the society, the civil society of Indonesia, helping to mean to ensure our democracy consolidate, we will be seeing better uh, roles of Indonesia and ASEAN in the world. And we do also hope that global uh, polarizations that we have been witnessing in the past uh, few years can be navigated in a strategic way by countries of ASEAN, including Indonesia. It is not easy. So uh, it is uh, a challenge, but I do think that great powers in Southeast Asia can be managed by ASEAN well and that Indonesia will be able to play a bigger role on that. Allow me to, to end my opening remarks uh, here, and I'm, I'm happy uh, to hear comments and, and, and conversation from, from your side, and would love to also underline the importance of the Institute at Oxford, and hopefully it will provoke more attention to Southeast Asia after the South uh, ASEAN Institute in Oxford uh, being established. Thank you very much. Can I directly? Can I directly? Um, can I just say, be before the governor takes q and I know we have a lot of guests here today um, that you've probably never been inside this room before, and I was explaining to the governor what this room is. I worked at the university for 10 years before I ever came inside this room. <laughs> so um, this is the second oldest part of the building. The oldest part of the university is the room next door, the Divinity School, which is from the 15th century. This was built 200 years later and was actually used as the English Parliament during uh, the English Civil War. So the benches where you're sitting now were actually used by the mother of all parliaments. And I think in Indonesia you have a a semi-circle. A semi-circle. Semi Most modern parliaments like the Indonesian one are based on the French model, which is a semi-circle. But this is based on the Westminster model, which we also call the adversarial model. Ah. 